If you've spent any amount of time in Barbados, you probably know of many places where you can try great authentic Bayesian food. But if you have a preconceived idea for what those places should look like, you might walk right by what could have been your favorite place to grab a bite. I'm Gordon and this is my first Tina Sun Bar. It's a little bar and grill located in Folkestone Marine Park. If you look around, you can see this is the park area. And right on this side over here is a lovely beach. This uh, CSR bar was here for many, many years. It was here since 1981, if I'm correct. About 30 years or so. And it was owned by my dad at first. But then after you get older, you got sick, so I took over from that. Um, it's a very nice location. For most people, you would not know where it is, but it's located in, in St. James area. You have to come on the highway one, coming towards Spikestown, and then you're gonna see a sign on the right hand, on the left hand side which says Folkestone Marine Park. You make that left turn, you come all the way down, straight down to the bottom. That's where I come from. I born in Whole Town. Born Bread just a few born. miles. Bread and born Whole Town, only about five minutes up the road. Wow. Up the beach. I've tried fish cakes at many restaurants during my time in Barbados, but the ones made here at the Sea and Sandbar are my favorite. So the reason why I come here so often is for your fish cakes. <laughs> and the first, th first thing I want to do is, uh, can you explain what a fish cake is to somebody okay. who has never been to Barbados? Right. For those who don't know what a fish cake is, some people call it a fish ball. But a fish cake is made of codfish. Um, what you do with it, you boil most of the salt out of it first. Then you mix it with uh, butter such as uh, herbs. And I give you some of the herbs, I'm not going to give you all. Uh, you get some basil seasoning, you get some thyme, you get some chives, you get some onions, you get some one important thing, hot peppers. Hot peppers. Yeah. And then you make it into the butter, all that there. But the most important thing is the balance. You must have a balance of the herbs and the fish cake together. So that when you bite it, you can taste the herbs and the fish cake. Usually the fish cakes comes uh, different sizes. Um, some people make them like bigger than a golf ball, but the correct size is the golf ball size, like this. I'm breaking that. Golf ball size. And, right, and you put it into a fryer and it's deep fried. You can fry it in a pan as well, but the deep fryer is much better because it covers the whole thing with oil. And as soon as it turns brown, you bring it right up. Crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside. Also, the cooking. You make sure you're cooking properly because if you don't cook them properly, you pull it open, it's going to be like uh, still running inside. So you have to make sure that it's cooked properly. And the average time is about three, three minutes or four. All depends on how hot the fryer is. If the, the fryer should be at full blast, 250, 350 if it's on your fryer. And if you find that it's burning too fast, that means you cook on the outside, but not on the inside. You have to turn it down a little bit and that will finish cooking properly. See that? Like that. And then you drop it in like that. Let the spoon go right down and let it roll off. And that's how your fish gets going to form. <laughs> The recipe I actually learned from my aunt. My aunt who started doing the fish cakes. Yeah, that was it. Right. Uh, she so came up with the recipe and I just caught on from there and I just add and add and add till I get it to the way she does it. Because sometimes she'll be too busy to get to me or I'll be too busy to get to her. So I had to learn to do it myself. So I just watch her and she tell me what to do and from there it was done. So we're talking about years of refining uh, the it recipe? It took me about a year to really get it right. About really? A wow. Yeah, about a year. What happened to all those fish cakes in that year of process? You just uh, give them to uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, um... Did you give them away to friends? Um, well, to say that, some did sell. Yeah. You know, some I just have to throw it because it wasn't right, the butter wasn't right, so I just had to get rid sure. of it and start it fresh. And then when I finally get it right, it was no problem at all. And now they sell like, like, uh, well, like hot, cakes, hot cakes, usually. And if you order fish cakes, you also got to order something to drink. All right, so other than fish cakes, you guys also are known for a special rum punch. Right. Tell me about that. Okay, we well, a special rum punch here. We do a specialty rum punch here, and it's called St. Maria's Rum Punch. St. Maria's. You'll find it in most of the stores, massive big stores, yeah. or you'll find it in the wine world. But here, I can do it from here too, which is a little less cost for you if you buy it from here. Sure. Uh, I sell it by the half gallons, or you can get a pint and a half bottle. Now, the secret, or I should say the recipe to any basic rum punch is usually one sour, Two sweet, three strong, four weak, and then you add your nutmeg and your bitters. One sour, that's the lime juice. Two sweet, that's the simple syrup. Three strong, that's the rum. Four weak, the ice, and you add Angostura bitters, nutmeg, and it's there. And you can always tweet it, 
taste it, to do with it, how you you like your taste. Based on and your you own like preference. You like it sour or you like it sweet. That's your your. That's what you do. And you can sit there all day having a cocktail, drinking around, and say, "Oh, this is good." Really sitting there, it's good. And then when you get up to walk away, then you realize, <laughs> "Oh, everything goes up to your head." So you gotta be careful of rum punch. I'm not only specialized in rum punch, but I specialize in other cocktails such as uh, pina coladas, mojitos. Strawberry daiquiris, and also I have a drink called Sex with the Bartender. No one knows about that one. No one knows. It's not on the menu list. And the only way to get that drink is coming to the Sea and Sand Bar to see what Sex with the Bartender is like. <laughs> Before, folks, you were seeing uh, me with the mask on. Now I'm without the mask. So this is the face you really see when you come to the bar. Oh, I'm at the outside smiling. And to top it off, you've got incredible ambience to go with it all. Uh, what makes my bar special? Is that when, as I said, you come here, first of all, the scenery. You can't beat this. You can work from this side. This is the office <laughs> that I have. <laughs> you, uh, you never get tired. You never get tired watching the sea. It's never tiring. It's calm. It's relaxing. You also have nice shade outside, natural shade. You've got the trees that surrounding, you've got the birds in the park. And then when you're tired of that, you can look across over to the big side. Look at that. Look at that. Now what more can you want? And we are facing west right now, so the sunset every night. Right. Right on there. The west coast, right there. One of the best places for the, for the sunset. Watching the sun set slowly over the ocean as the waves crash against the sand while you enjoy a rum punch and an order of fish cakes is one of the most relaxing, enjoyable experiences you can have in Barbados. And for that, a sincere thank you to Gordon and the Sea and Sandbar, a great reminder that the biggest flavors can often come from the smallest kitchens.